Dakota State Bison win their second FCS championship. And they do it in fine fashion, 39 to 13, and let the party begin. Winter is coming. Tomorrow marks the first day of a new season. But in Fargo, the winds of winter have already come and conquered, except in here. Jensen looking to throw, has all day. Going to Braun, the end zone. It's touchdown, Bison. North Dakota State remains undefeated. The Bison stand two wins away from a perfect season and a third straight championship. But upstart New Hampshire has fixed its gaze on the crown. It's the Wildcats and Bison. It's a game of thrones and the game's afoot. The NCAA FCS championships are presented by Northwestern Mutual. Dakota State making its grand entrance into the Fargo Dome. It's a semifinal matchup in the FCS playoffs. The Bison of North Dakota State, your two-time defending champion, New Hampshire in the semifinals for the first time in school history. The winner of tonight's game will face the winner of Eastern Washington and Towson in the FCS championship, the title game, January 4th in Frisco, Texas. And with that, we say good evening. And East Schroff alongside former first-round pick Kelly Stauffer. When you look at North Dakota State, here's a team that's won 22 straight games. New Hampshire is rolling. They've won six in a row. And when you take a closer look, I know they remind you of somebody. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. If North Dakota State is the FCS version of Alabama, then who is New Hampshire? I think it's Oregon. Remember, some guy named Chip Kelly, before he went to Oregon, was perfecting that scheme in New Hampshire. New Hampshire's going to do that offensively. That's their chance to win this game tonight. Meanwhile, for the Wildcats, they're a great example of how a playoff rewards teams who have improved throughout the course of the season. This was a New Hampshire team that started one and three. Now they're one of the final four teams left. Yeah, without a doubt about it. And what you want to do is you want to get better September through November and be peaking with a lot of momentum in December. And that's exactly what New Hampshire has done. Sean McDonald told us this, the head coach in New Hampshire, we've earned the right to be here. We're going to play loose. We're going to play free. And man alive, are we going to take cuts with the bat tonight? For North Dakota State, the Bison are chasing history. This is a team that set out before the season to not just win a championship, but to have a perfect season, two wins away from that goal. Well, let me give you a player that I think epitomizes what you just said. Unbelievable goals. Brock Jensen, the starting quarterback, the winningest quarterback at the FCS level, 45 and five in his starting career. He's unselfish, he does all the little things right. He always gives his chance, his team a chance to win the game. Let's meet the third member of our team down on the field, Cara Capuano. Cara? Guys, when North Dakota State head coach Craig Bull took over this Bison football program, one opposing coach likened playing here in the Fargo Dome to playing in a church. What a difference over a decade of success makes. Average attendance has skyrocketed under Bull's tenure from about 10,000 a game to well over 18,000 per. Bison fans, they're not only loud, they're educated. Here in the quarterfinals last week, I measured a 30 decibel difference between cheers of celebration and in support of the defense and the quiet when the Bison offense goes to work. Anish? This is one of the best home field advantages in all of college football. North Dakota State has won 13 straight at home.
New Hampshire won the toss. The Wildcats defer. So North Dakota State will receive to start this semifinal matchup off. There is Craig Bull, the head coach for North Dakota State, headed to Wyoming after the postseason run. He's won two straight Eddie Robinson awards. That goes to the top coach in the FCS. He's the first coach to win that honor in back-to-back -back seasons. We're about set for kick at the Fargo Dome here in North Dakota. The winner moves on to the FCS championship two weeks from tomorrow in Frisco, Texas. Mike MacArthur boots it. Here's John Crockett from his own goal line. And Crockett spun down at the 20-yard line, a return of 20. And we get a first look at this North Dakota State offense. The Bison in their last game, 600-plus yards in a quarterfinal win against Coastal Carolina. And their quarterback, who we talked about in the open, Brock Jensen, one word comes to mind, winner. Yeah, winner, and probably the next thing is efficient. Incredibly efficient with the football. 30 touchdown passes, only six interception. He rarely makes a mistake and does a great job of managing the run game at the line of scrimmage. Jensen, the winningest quarterback in FCS history. North Dakota State lines up in the eye. On first down, Jensen finds Ryan Smith. Fourth all time advising history in reception. Smith picks up nine, tackled by Steven Timms. And so, Anish, what are we going to see out of this Bison offense? We're going to see a pro-style offense. We're actually going to see a huddle. We're going to see a fullback the majority of the time. Two wide receivers. They use their tight end in a multiplicity of ways. They'll detach him, but it's a physical hit-you-in-the-mouth run game and see if the defense can do anything about it. On second and short, that's Sam O'Jury, 1,000-yard back, tackled by Shane McNeely after a gain of five and a first down. And we're going to see O'Jury probably the majority of the times tonight. He, he's probably the best all-around running back. And at playoff time, the offensive coordinator, Brent Vegan, told us that O'Jury does the little things right. He pass blocks, he runs great routes, and playoff time needs that kind of preciseness. You're going to see North Dakota State milk the play clock, take their time. They value time of possession. And how about the crowd, as Kara talked about, almost a pin drop silence in here. Jensen to the air, intercepted! Timms is going to take it back for six, and New Hampshire strikes first. Well, part of the template for New Hampshire having an opportunity to win this game is exactly what we just saw. Some amazing things have to happen early to them. Watch number 21, Tim's at the top. It's all about route recognition and situational football. North Dakota State loves to throw the quick passing game on first down. That was first down, a quick pass, and Tim's just jumps all over it and takes it to the house. What an amazing start for New Hampshire early here. It's the third straight game where Timms has had an interception. Fourth pick of the year and a pick six. Gets New Hampshire off to the fast start as they score on defense. Point after by MacArthur, good. The defense for Sean McDonald's Wildcats gets his team on the board first here at the Fargo Dome. Seven nothing New Hampshire. The last time North Dakota State lost a game, it was to Indiana State October of last year. Brock Jensen, the Bison quarterback, intercepted three times in that game. Indiana State ran two back. New Hampshire running one back on their first defensive and Steven series. Steven Timms is right here. Look where he's looking into the backfield. He's going to see Brock Jensen do a three-step drop. It means a quick pass. If the quarterback stops... In coverage, I can stop, and that's exactly what Tims does. He reads the quarterback, he jumps on the quick route, and what a big play for his team early here tonight. So the junior from Fort Washington, Maryland, Stephen Tims, gets the visitors on the board first. Remember, this is a New Hampshire team. That's the only unseeded team left in these FCS playoffs. They went on the road to beat Maine in the second round, went on the road to beat Southeastern Louisiana last week. 
They're no strangers to playing in hostile territory. Nine road games this season. John Crockett on the return. Tackle shy of the 25-yard line. And the thing that we have to keep an eye out for later is the double move off of that quick route. North Dakota State will probably pump that and then go vertical. And obviously in the back end, New Hampshire is going to have to be heads up for that. If you, if you had a template, Anish, for a start that gives New Hampshire a chance, we just saw it. Yeah, New Hampshire comes into this game as a heavy underdog. Remember, North Dakota State, 22 straight wins, two-time defending champ. The only undefeated team in the FCS. Out of the eye, Sam O'Jury, the 1,000-yard back, dots the eye. Play action. Near side, that's complete to Zach Braw. He's North Dakota State's top receiver, first team all conference, a gain of eight yards. Let's see how North Dakota State is planning for success tonight. It's brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Well, the things that have to happen is New Hampshire has to execute their offense, which we haven't even seen yet at an extremely high level. Manage this difficult environment. North Dakota State make it a physical line of scrimmage game, and then the defense for North Dakota have to keep their eyes right against that multiple formationing offense of New Hampshire. Here's O'Jury on the delay. Ball comes out, and it appears New Hampshire's got it. So what a turn of events to start this game. Two drives for the Bison, two turnovers. And we talked about how North Dakota State wins games is they take care of it and they control the football. But that ball obviously comes out. O'Jury gets it stripped late. And the fans right now are stunned, but they're trying to find the energy to get in this game. They don't believe what they're seeing. Rashid Armand forced the fumble. It was recovered by Casey DeAndre. Short field for the Wildcats on their first offensive possession. Sean Goldrich throws underneath, and it's off the hands of R.J. Harris. Second down and 10. Goldrich making his sixth straight start. Great game last week against Southeastern Louisiana. Did a lot of damage with his feet. 99 rushing yards, a career high in that game and he ran for three touchdowns, including the game winner. Yeah, and the last part, running for touchdowns, I think is what he's added to this offense. He's a high school drop back passer that can run it extremely well. That's Chris Sedian. And Sedian takes it to about the 35 yard line. It's a gain of six, tackled by Carlton Littlejohn. Sedian normally their short yardage back. Nico Storiti. Handles the carries on first and second down for the most part. But Storini and Sedian are both fullback-like guys in terms of build. They're very physical down here heel guys, but both of them do have a burst. Third down. Storini doesn't get very far. The ball comes out, but the whistle was already blown. So three and out for New Hampshire, and it's fourth down, and now a decision for Sean McDonald. And it looks like the offense is staying on there early, and remember what I talked about at the open, the swings of the bat? Well, this is a swing of the bat. You want to get while the getting's good. Leave your offense out there and try to maximize this opportunity. Last week, the Wildcats had two field goals blocked and also an extra point. Harris is a go-to guy in this situation. Goldrich under pressure. Nowhere to go. And he stops shy of the first down marker. A big hold by that North Dakota State defense, which is number two in the nation. And North Dakota State's defense is all about funneling you to third down and getting off the field. They only allow drives to be extended about 27% of the time on third down. And that's a great example of it. You look at how good this Bison defense is. The numbers bear the story. Crazy. You mentioned the third down conversion percentage by the opponents. Total yards, rushing yards, teams under 100 per game, and top 10 against the pass as well. 
flag on the play as John Crockett gets his first carry of the game. And Crockett spins to the 35-yard line. It's a gain of three. We'll see if the play stands. All sides on the defense, number 60. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Penalty on the junior, Matt Kaplan. Harry Saunders from the Southern Conference, who's our head referee today. And New Hampshire defensively is somewhat generic. They play a lot of four-man defensive line, two high safeties. They'll mix in some man-to-man -man pressures out of that four-man front. But where they're a little different is on third and passing type downs. They go three-man in an exotic blitz out of that. Double tight end set here on first and five. Jensen to throw, another flag on the play. Jensen, near sideline, he's got his fullback, Andrew Bonnet, but another penalty mark. All sides on the defense, number 60. Five yard penalty, four first down. That's Kaplan again. Yeah, from that defensive tackle position, and he's essentially right over the football. He's one of the guys closest to that ball in this entire stadium and is just really lining up offsides. There wasn't any pre-snap movement by Kaplan. He's offsides to begin with. So that gives North Dakota State a first down and 10. Jensen, his ball, and that is ruled incomplete, so it'll be second down and 10 to go for the Bison. And a shaky start by Brock Jensen. Bra was open, a two-man route. He runs a curl route, and you have Gebhardt, number three, outside of him. I'm not the fans sure that's an incomplete pass. Yeah, that's the fans close. here certainly think it was completed. It's going to be reviewed further, which is standard procedure, but... Did that ball make contact with the ground before he got his hands under it? Kelly, you said off the top, this North Dakota State team reminds you a lot of Alabama as Jensen squeezes that one in there to Vraw. It's got to be indisputable evidence to overturn the call. In Jensen, do you see some A.J. McCarron? No doubt about it. And they're, they're both labeled managers, which every quarterback is a manager or you don't play very long. Well. You have to manage situations. Brock Jensen is very good at it. He's not going to wow you with his arm strength. His arm skill overall is okay, but very good decision making, just like A.J. McCarron. And when there's an opportunity at hand, they're both typically incredibly accurate throwers of the football. When we spoke to North Dakota State offensive coordinator Brett Vegan, he told us the one thing that stood out about Jensen, his poise. Circumstances can get difficult if there's adversity to face. Pressure situation in the fourth quarter. You need a guy to lead a drive. Jensen has been that guy, and more often than not, he's come through. And as a former quarterback, when you step into the huddle in crunch time, you have to have a certain almost smell about you. Everybody around you wants to know how you're going to respond. The look in your eye all means something to the guys around you and does Brock get his hand under it remember you talked about it indisputable video evidence is the standard it was called incomplete on the field the ball seems to make contact with the ground I think what we're going to see is stands as called because there isn't enough evidence either way to turn it over how it was originally called after further review the ruling on the field stands incomplete pass. They did not say it is confirmed, so no evidence to overturn the call. That's why it's so important how the play is initially called. Absolutely, and, and that was a result of Brock Jensen not being accurate with the football, which is very unlike number number 16. Bra was open, and he just didn't put it on it. Derek Lang into the game at running back for the first time. Sweep Eric Perkins. Perkins gets a couple, so this will bring up third down and eight to go. We talked about how good North Dakota State 
was on defense on third downs. Their offense equally good. Number one in the nation in converting third downs, 56%. And that's exactly how they essentially squeeze the life out of their opponent. Their offense extends drives. Their defense doesn't allow drives to be extended. The result is they smother people come second half. New Hampshire showing blitz. They'll bring the pressure. Jensen finds Vaughn. He's got a first down. Now it's incomplete. Vaughn couldn't hold on that time. And if he caught it, it would have moved the chain. So another hold here by this New Hampshire defense. Encouraging signs of the defensive front for the Wildcats. And, and unexplained kind of signs of jitters by that man right there, who's cool, calm, and collected. Already has two national championships, for crying out loud. But Braun on that play, accurately thrown ball, a guy who always catches it, didn't catch it there. Teams have only returned seven punts all season against the Bison for a total of nine yards. High snap. And the cop gets it off. Fair catch signal. And Nick Cefalo makes it inside his own 20 after a 47-yard boot. When we come back, we'll revisit the scene at Fargo when game day was here earlier in the year. Is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. September 21st, this past season, game day set up shop in downtown Fargo. It was a raucous crowd. It was a great scene. Watching that in my hotel room, we were on the road. It was probably one of the better game day setups we've seen this year. Lee Corso picked the Bison to win. North Dakota State beat Delaware 51 to nothing. You know, the tagline to the movie Fargo is a lot can happen in the middle of nowhere. When game day was here, this place became somewhere. Second offensive drive for New Hampshire. Goldrich dives across the 25-yard line for a pickup of six yards. And what we just saw right there out of Goldrich was a tall quarterback run. Goldrich is a willing runner of the football. So you have the quarterback read, and then you have the bubble screen game. But he has, I think, energized this offense, especially in this playoff run. Five receiver look here on second and four. Goldrich has room. He'll tuck it and run. He dives for the first down. And we're starting to see that running ability from Goldrich, 99 yards last week, a career high against southeastern Louisiana. And a pocket passer in high school, but defensive coordinator Chris Kleiman told us this from North Dakota State that the thing that's tough about Goldrich is he doesn't have a tendency when he scrambles with the football. He's a willing runner of it, but he can also throw it, but you don't know which he prefers to do. It's Dalton Cross in with a nice run, and he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And in the game right now on defense for North Dakota State, the leader of this team, Grant Olson, who tore his ACL and had missed the last four games. He's a first-team all-conference selection. Had 29 tackles in the quarterfinals last year against Wofford. He comes off the field now, but the fact that he got on the field, that's a testament to how hard he's worked to do that. Goldrich in trouble, trips, and down he goes, leading the charge. That time, Kyle Emanuel, the Bison's leader in sacks. And Emanuel is that defensive end that really has next-level talent. And he's their explosive player. When they want to get pressure, a lot of times what they'll do is try to create a one-on-one -on -one by covering people up on the line of scrimmage to try to free number 53 up. Successful on that play. delay 
Stridi with nowhere to go, tackled by the All-American Ryan Drevlo. Let's check in with the studio and Chris Cotter. Manish Kelly, ESPNU, Division Three National Championship. Surprise, surprise, it's Wisconsin Whitewater and Mountain Union. Here, Matt Barron finds Tyler Huber and Wisconsin Whitewater with a seven-point lead at the half, guys. All right, thank you, Chris. Last year, it was St. Thomas getting to the championship game, losing to Mount Union. Wisconsin Whitewater back in the D3 title hunt. On third and 11, three-man rush, Goldridge. Incomplete, he wanted his tight end, Harold Spears, and he tried to thread it into the double team. Good coverage that time by the All-American cornerback, Marcus Williams. And Spears, the big tight end, is detached and runs the corner. Harris is setting underneath. That was a great throw into coverage. Over top of the corner before the safety can get there, and that ball should have been caught, but a good job by Marcus Williams breaking on the ball and breaking that play off. Brad Prasky on to punt it away, averaging almost 41 and a half per kick. Low snap. Line drive kick. It takes a Wildcat bounce, and it goes out of bounds. Out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Bison football when we return. The FCS playoffs conclude with the championship game in Frisco, Texas in two weeks. The championship game airs live on ESPN2 January 4th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Early on, this New Hampshire defense, which has improved dramatically from the beginning of the season to now, has really made a statement, an interception, a forced fumble, and they forced North Dakota State to punt. And you're right, down this stretch of the season and into the playoffs, that's really been the deep... The, the difference, the defensive numbers, the offensive numbers are similar. Defense is playing much better for New Hampshire. This is John Crockett who needs four yards to get to 1,000. And he just reached that Matt plateau. Well, you look at the defense, Stephen Timms, the pick six, the only score of the game. That was on North Dakota State's first drive. And then Sam O'Jury fumbles, recovered by the Wildcats. And a good play on the ball by DeAndre. makes the tackle. And Crockett and O'Jury, North Dakota State, 2,000-yard backs now. This is power football. Guard pulls, fullback leads, and Crockett gashes them. This is quintessential Bison football. You see the big guard pulling around right there, and then Crockett gets up inside. That's how this offense typically controls the clock. Two tight ends here on first and ten. Play action. All day for Jensen. Going over the top for Frog. Touchdown, Bison. Well, Kelly, last week, Jensen took a couple of shots deep early and overthrew his receiver. That time he found Braun Stride. Yeah, he didn't miss this one. Matched up on Stephen Timms that particular time. Middle open and I have a post to my best receiver. All I have to do as a quarterback is lay it in there. And what a beautiful throw it was. Three plays, 81 yards in just a minute and six. Not your typical North Dakota State drive, but they can do that to you. They can roll you to sleep thinking they're going to grind the ball, pound it on the ground, and then beat you over the top with big plays on occasion. Yeah, and that was a great use of the double move. What you're going to see is Bra goes to the middle. Bra with a no safety help deep just burns Tim Tim's on that particular play. Remember, Tim's jumped on a route earlier. It was somewhat of an outside move and then go to the post. But a very, very high level route, coupled with the throw, and Bra catches the touchdown. 
14th touchdown reception of the season for Zach Fraw, a junior from Minnesota. The 14 touchdowns, a school record in terms of receiving TDs. And here's a guy who's really had a breakout season. Early on, he was hampered by injuries, suffered multiple broken collarbones. But he's been healthy this year, and that's made all the difference. And remember how this drive started. John Crockett comes in and gets a downhill running going. That was successful. And then what is it? Play action pass, and they go home run over the top. And that is exactly how North Dakota State's offense functions. They pound you until you get your eyes wrong, and then they burn you deep. Steridian crossing back deep for New Hampshire. Wildcats get it from the 25-yard line after the touchback. New Hampshire in the quarterfinals last week. Great game against Southeastern Louisiana. Southeastern Louisiana came in on a 10-game win streak. The Wildcats led 14-7 late in the third. Quarterback Sean Goldrich, two rushing TDs at that point. And then Brian Bennett, the Oregon transfer. Uh, one of the best plays of the year. That was on fourth down. That was for the lead. And then Goldrich leading the Wildcats back down for the game-winning touchdown in New Hampshire. Moving on to the semis. First time in school history, a 20-17 win. Goldrich squeezes that one in, that Harris. And that's a first down, a gain of 11 to the 36-yard line. And North Dakota State's go-to coverage is the old-style Tampa 2. Two high safeties, and then the middle linebacker will run the middle of the field. Remember, because of this offensive scheme for New Hampshire, the nickel and dime personnel are always on the field tonight for North Dakota State. Quick screen. Here's R.J. Harris, who scampers out of bounds. Marked out at the 38-yard line. A short gain, second and nine. And R.J. Harris is the find him guy. Goldridge wants to find him on the offensive side, and North Dakota State's game plan is centered around finding number 15 as well. you got to locate him because the pass game works through number 15. Goldridge did have Harris. Now he's going to run, and Goldrich dives across the 40-yard line, marked out at the 44, a gain of six. You mentioned Harris, 11 catches, 110 yards last week. He missed almost four games this year, recovering from a concussion, and he was still a first-team all-conference selection. That's how good he is. Yeah, that says a lot, but he's the move guy. He catches the bubble screen, and then they'll run a reverse to him out of that slot position as well. Lined up right there in the inner slot once again. Empty look on third and three. Goldrich flushed. Now changes course. Throws on the run. And incomplete intended receiver Justin Mello was out of bounds. And I think Mello was out of bounds to begin with. But what an athletic play by Sean Goldrich. And that's the energy that he's brought to this offense. Nothing there early, and they were going to an isolation on Harris. But Mello, I think, just gets too close to the sideline. Left foot out of bounds. He catches it well, but the left foot was already on the white right there. That's a terrific look at it. The last time around, New Hampshire had a low snap, and Brad Brasky got off a line drive punt. This one takes a North Dakota State bounce. Key injury in the game from where we go to Kara. Wide receiver Ryan Smith out for the North Dakota State Bison. He injured a hamstring on the second offensive series for North Dakota State. So watch for number 13, redshirt freshman Eric Perkins to be taking over in his role. Well, Kara, that's a great heads up because Ryan Smith is that slot receiver with draw outside. They're a great tandem. And now he's not in there, so they got to have to get a lot from 13 Aaron Perkins. And Smith is a guy, too, that the Bison like to use on fly sweeps Absolutely. out of that slot position. That is a huge development.
Sham Ojuri back into the game for North Dakota State. He fumbled the last time he got it. Ojuri gets the call, wrapped up immediately by Julian Turner. But there is a penalty marker. Illegal motion on the offense, number 46. Penalty is declined, second down. That's Andrew Bonnet, the backup fullback. And another thing about that injury to Ryan Smith is the return game. I mean, he is an explosive guy, averaging 21.7 yards on punt returns. They have Christian Dudzik as well, the free safety back there to return punts, but that is a massive loss for North Dakota State. Perkins, who's in for Smith, lined up in the slot. Jensen's going to keep this one. Jensen's got some room, lowers his shoulder before being tackled by Nudson, a gain of 22 yards. You have to fall asleep on Brock Jensen. He'll beat you with his feet. It's a sneaky good run game. The defense is going to rotate that direction out of the secondary. Brock Jensen just runs away from the rotation. Rotation to the right. Brock Jensen runs out the left side if you're looking at it defensively. That's the sneaky good stuff that you see out of the quarterback rug game. It's not pretty when he does it, but it's typically very effective. Jensen, 75 rushing yards, two touchdowns in the quarterfinal win against Coastal Carolina, and 86 yards rushing the second round against Furman, and also ran for a touchdown in that game. This is Ojuri. Ojuri picks up a couple. Sam Ojuri. Posted his third straight 1,000-yard season for the Bison this year. He had a big game last week as well, 162 yards and a couple of TDs. And that physical downhill run game that the Bison really liked, you, you came into this game wondering how New Hampshire would hold up on the defensive line of scrimmage. And actually, so far, so good. They've held up pretty decently. It's a seasoned front four for the Wildcats. Three seniors and a junior. Play action. Jensen's throw too high for Trevor Gebhardt. And it's third and eight. Again, North Dakota State on third downs. Number one in the FCS, 56%. Normally, though, they don't face a ton of third and eights. That's the difference. That's a byproduct of their run game. You win first and second down, you kind of get things to third and makeable, and that's why they convert about, you know, over half the time. It, this isn't that type of situation. This is where they miss Ryan Smith. New Hampshire packs the box. Safety blitz. Jensen throws, caught by Graw. Zach Braw with a first down for the Bison, a gain of 10. Nisha, I think that's what we're going to see more of. The three-by-one set to create that one-on-one -on -one matchup at the top with Braw. That's too easy. The soft coverage, well, Brock Jensen knows right now, all I have to do is hit my fifth step and throw the football on time, and I convert, and that's exactly what he did. DeAndre had gave him a lot of room there Too as a defender. Room. You've got to know where that first down marker is. Yeah, situational football. You don't want to get bit, beat deep, but do not give up the easy throw and catch. They got soft coverage here, but North Dakota State goes to the run. A jury bullies his way across the 30-yard line. Finally brought down by Jay Colbert. It's a gain of nine yards in second and short for the Bison as they're on the move. It's amazing how quiet it gets when the Bison have the football. Contrast that to the decimal level when the opposing offense is out there. It's, it's pretty amazing to witness. The sound of silence right now. You can't hear anything when the Wildcats have it. Fullback Grothman in motion. Play action. Jensen. Downfield, the ball is tipped. It lands incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Kevin Vaughn that time. And Hayden Nudson knocked it away. The Bison were taking a shot. The 
second and extremely long, really within sight of a, a yard. And you can see Vodlin actually ran somewhat of an inside wheel route. He was lined up on the opposite side, runs across the formation and up the hash. And that was just very well covered on the back end by New Hampshire. On third and short, a jury up the middle. And he's to the 22 yard line for a first down. And Anish, to your point a couple of plays ago, that's how North Dakota State converts at about 60% clip. They're third and manageable, and they just pound it behind a really, really physical offensive line of scrimmage. This is a power running game. Two great backs, you know, Jury and Crockett, an All-American fullback and Grothman, and that left tackle, 77, Billy Turner, might be the best offensive player in the FCS. Ojuri tries the middle again, and he's down to the 16-yard line for a gain of five as we come up on the final 10 seconds of the first quarter. Kelly, if you're New Hampshire, on the road, hostile environment, an early defensive touchdown, 7-7. Seven, seven, the Wildcats have got to feel good. Absolutely. They really couldn't have pitched it any better than this. 7-7 seven to seven at the end of the first is a big thing for them. You're watching the NCAA FCS Championships presented by Northwestern Mutual. And A. Shroff, Kelly Stauffer, Eric Capuano. FCS semifinal number one, North Dakota State and New Hampshire. The winner moves on to Frisco, Texas, and the title game where they will face either Eastern Washington or Towson, the second semifinal game tomorrow to Eastern on ESPNU. Chris Kleiman, the current defensive coordinator for North Dakota State, will succeed Craig Bowl as the team's next head coach. He was promoted, and right now he is balancing uh, and really juggling yeah. multiple duties. Yeah, it's it's really unique because he really is the named head coach, but he has a defensive game plan that isn't just for a interim coach situation in a bowl game, a potential march through the playoffs to a third consecutive national championship. Jensen will keep it. He's turned around. No gain on the play. Third down coming up. Yeah, he's trying to keep a recruiting class yeah. together. He's trying to line up future assistants and fill out his staff. Yeah, the, basically the defensive line coach, the strength and conditioning coach are staying. Everyone else is going to Wyoming. At least that's what we think at this point in time. But Kleiman has to put a staff together. But the thing that he wants to do is pay off this season. Be the defensive coordinator, the best defensive game plans that he can put together to try to march to Frisco in a couple of weeks. That's broad motion. He's in the slot on third down and four. Jensen for the end zone. And Brock could not come down with that. So it's fourth down. You called it. That was a pretty tight window, but Vraw came in the short motion and then was going back out to the corner with the receiver underneath sitting in the flat. There was room there, but it would have taken, taken a really good catch and probably a better throw. Adam Keller on for a 32-yard field goal. If you saw the game day feature on North Dakota State, you know he has four toes on his kicking foot. Keller, 8 of 11 this season, and he drills it from 32, and the Bison with their first lead of the game. 14.06 to go in the first half, North Dakota State on top by three. For New Hampshire head coach Sean McDonald, it's been a crazy odyssey with the quarterback position this year. Andy Velas started the season. In fact, he started the first four games that he got hurt. Sean Goldridge came in. Goldrich then hurt his rib cage. Bayless was back in. Bayless re-injured his knee. Then it was Goldrich and Bayless. And then before the postseason, the decision was made. We're going to go with Goldrich, and he's played very well in the three playoff games for the Wildcats. You were kind of making me dizzy there for a little while. I mean, you're right. They're in and out, in and out. But I think when this team really got settled in is when Goldrich got healthy and bringing that passability. But I think his 
athleticism was much underrated. We were told that he actually isn't as good as athlete, an athlete as Bayless is. I didn't see that on tape. Number five can make some plays with his feet. Yeah, Goldrich actually started as a freshman last year. He was the starter going into the season. And then by season's end, we were seeing both Goldrich and Bayless. So this has gone on for a couple of years with New Hampshire. Here's Dalton Cross up from inside his own five. Cross a nice move. Out across the 25 and spun down near the 30-yard line after a 26-yard return. We check in again with the studio and Chris Cotter. Division three national championship over on the U. Jordan Ratcliffe is going to take, or Ratliff rather, taking this one from 18 yards out. Wisconsin Whitewater with a 28-14 lead in the third quarter. Warhawks looking to win their fifth title in seven years. Any? All right, Chris. New Hampshire offensively hasn't gotten it going against this North Dakota State defense. The Bison defensively, number two in the nation in total defense, number one in scoring defense. Wildcat look, Nico Storiti using the stiff arm and then spun down for a loss by Carlton Littlejohn. Defensive coordinator Chris Kleiman, the next head coach, called Littlejohn the unsung hero of this team because of all the positions he can play. And he's really stepped up as that Mike linebacker when Grant Olson went down. Yeah, Grant Olson went down and Little John was playing the strong side linebacker position. He moved into the middle and this defense really didn't skip a beat. Bison show blitz. That's complete far sideline and Harris skirts out of bounds near the first down marker. You talked about it, Anish. The Bison showed blitz. They were blitzing from the right side, but it was really a fire zone situation. Travis Beck was trying to get out underneath that out route on the outside and was just a little bit late arriving. Third catch for Harris. It was enough for a first down. Goldrich under pressure. Try to run, takes a big hit. He's out across the 40 to the 42. Little John again with the tackle. And one of the things that is going to be important this evening, because of the noise, the pre-snap administration of this offense, and what they see is the skilled players, including the quarterback, get the play from the sideline. The quarterback relays it to the offensive lineman, and then the right guard looks back at the quarterback, will tap the center when the quarterback is ready. over the middle incomplete broken up by little john who's put his stamp on this series little john did a nice job of getting depth and getting underneath that rod but we saw new hampshire's way of trying to handle this noise before the snap the play action pass right here by goldridge trying to get it over the top but i think a little more air it put it even in more jeopardy could potentially get picked off by the defender just a little bit deeper than that Wildcats 0 for 3 on third downs. North Dakota State with the best third down defense in the FCS. Goldridge's pass is caught. And Justin Mello gobbled up. Fourth down. Kelly, you played for the Seattle Seahawks back when uh, they didn't play at Questfield, but they played in the old Kingdom. In terms of handling noise, what did you see out of opponents and trying to manage the noise there? Well, the same kind of thing. You had to go with a silent count. Essentially, there's no verbal communication offensively. It's all done hand signals, and we see the latest variety of it where the card actually is the one that starts the play. <laughs> Dudzik retrieves. He catches the punt out of bounds. Marked out of bounds to the 13-yard line. Bison ball when we come back. Brock Jensen finished fourth in the voting for the Walter Payton Award. Some early adversity, but he's bounced back. That was a much better play by Tims than it was a bad play by Brock Jensen, but the rebound is right here. Middle open, find my best receiver on the post. That's a tremendous response. And then right here, defense is rotating one way. 
trying to sneak out the other side. You see his feistiness there at the end. They will hook the wagon to number 16 tonight. Look at those numbers. Those are unreal. More wins than any other quarterback in the FCS. And at the end of the day, you know he's a former quarterback. That's the stat which measures how good a QB is. You can put up all the yards you want. At the end of the day, they say, how many games did you win? That guy's won a lot of games. Jensen eludes the pursuit. Still on his feet, and Jensen, it didn't look like he was getting much, ends up getting to the 20 yard line and picking up seven yards. The most underrated part of that young man's game right there. You know, he's not known as being a guy that moves around and is elusive, but this is a plus for his offense. That was a sack. It should have been a negative play. He turns it in to a seven or eight yard gain. That's a great play by number 16, Brock Jensen. 29 yards rushing so far for Jensen. He counted for four touchdowns last week. This time he hands it off. Here's Crockett right up the gut across the 40. And tackled at the 44 yard line. It's a 24 yard pickup. New Hampshire's defensive front seven is wanting to move around a little bit. They rotate in the secondary, and you see the slants up front. And the best way to counter that is just run right into the, the face mask. And that's what you see. Physical run right over where that football was snapped. Last week against Coastal Carolina in the quarterfinals, the Bison put up 623 yards of total offense. They did most of their damage on the ground. Two tight ends on first and 10. Crockett spins across the 45, picks up a yard, second down. Nanish, in a play like that, where North Dakota State has gone double tights with a fullback, only one wide receiver. New Hampshire shows that they're really up to the task on the line of scrimmage. They're doing a decent job in true run downs that we saw right there. That was all about a statement play by the offense. Get physical and see if the defense handles it. New Hampshire handled it very well. Four receivers set now by the Bison. Jensen's pass caught by Gebhardt. Gain of eight yards. It'll bring up third down and short. With Ryan Smith, really the true slot receiver out of the game, we're seeing a lot more of number three Gebhardt and also 13 Eric Perkins is working the middle of the field as well. Both of those guys are doing a fairly nice job. You see Ryan Smith right there. Not a good sign for the Bison when your second leading receiver is taking notes on the sideline. Again, that double tight end set with the fullback. And this is Crockett, finds his seam. Crockett tripped up and goes down inside the 10 yard line. Hayden Nudson slowed him just enough to prevent the touchdown. The power run game. You're gonna get a lineman that pulls, and then you're gonna get an offensive fullback. That's not a rare species back there. Actually, it's a very rare species. It's not Sasquatch, but <laughs> you get the power run game. The pulling guard kicks out the first guy. The fullback kicks out the second guy, and the result is Crockett gashes him downhill. That's a rare sighting right there. This is a fullback. Andrew Grothman, he's an All-American. There's Sam O'Jury, and he takes a big hit. Turned away by Devon Chalette. No gain. This linebacking core, Kelly, for New, uh, New Hampshire has really come a long way. They lost two big-time players. Matt Evans, a former Buck Buchanan Award winner. That goes to the best defensive player of the FCS. And Alan Busby, a three-year starter. Shalette, Akeel Anderson, and Shane McNeely have really come along as this season's gone on. And it's really a 4-2 scheme. Only two linebackers, and you're right. Anderson and McNeely have well over 100 tackles on the year, and we saw Shalette on that play making a very nice tackle for a loss. Timeout, North Dakota State. Their first charge timeout of the half. Timeout, Bison. 
747 to go here in the first half. North Dakota State has scored 10 straight, looking for more. Capital One Bowl Week kicks off tomorrow with a full slate of games. It starts at 2 Eastern on ESPN. Kelly, your alma mater, Colorado State, bowling again, taking on Washington State, resurgent, and going to a bowl game in Mike Leach's second year. Yeah, resurgent for both programs, and I like to see them back bowling. And Derek Carr, Fresno State, USC, that's a really good matchup. Look at the numbers right here. That young man has had a great career at Fresno State. 48 touchdown passes. They're talking about Carr now, potentially as a first round pick. I know you're impressed by his game at Fresno. Yeah, we compared actually Garoppolo last week the with Eastern Derek Illinois Carr. quarterback. Very similar releases. I mean, very quick, smooth releases, and they can spin about any throw you want to make. Derek Lang into the game at running back for North Dakota State on second and goal. Two tight ends. And they line up three in the backfield. Play action. Jensen's going to throw it back the other way. And it's caught for a touchdown by Lang. The throwback, all of the movement is to the right side. The play action was actually to Derek Lyon. And for whatever reason, the defense a lot of times will drop the guy that the quarterback fakes to. It's, he's a tremendous guy to throw the ball to after the play action pass, and there's a good example of it. First receiving touchdown of the year for the one they call the D-Train. Derek Lang, a former walk-on. And it's 17 unanswered for the Bison of North Dakota State. The NCAA FCS Championship is brought to you by Jared the Galleria Jewelry. Truly unique designs that you won't find just anywhere. That's why he went to Jared. And the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. It was a tough start for the Bison here at the Fargo Dome. North Dakota State's first three drives resulted in an interception, a lost fumble, and a punt. The last three have all resulted in points. Yeah, and conversely, you wonder if New Hampshire's having a little buyer's remorse. They didn't get any points off of that second turnover. And they also held the Bison out of the end zone and one of their trips down into the red zone where the bison score 75 percent touchdown that's a tremendous number and new hampshire really has to maximize their opportunities from start to finish in this game one missed opportunity so far for the wildcats and offensively they've had a tough time against a very good bison defense this kid fielding on a couple of bounces Scaritti. Dropped at the 19-yard line. Let's go down to Kara. Well, guys, for the third straight year, these FCS playoffs have moved the winter graduation ceremony from the Fargo Dome to the Bison Sports Arena. Five of the Bison football players enjoyed a quick graduation ceremony earlier today, including Derek Lang, who just scored that last touchdown, fullback Andrew Grothman, who was big on that drive, and three guys on the defensive line. Levon Perry, Cole Jerick, and Ryan Dremlin. And each, that's you know, good stuff. It's funny because for years you heard the BCS rhetoric at the FBS level. You can't have playoffs. It gets in the way of graduation and finals. Clearly, there are ways to get around that. Yeah, Carol, Kara just framed a great example of that. You Student adjust. Athletes, you adjust. You make it happen. There's, there's no question about that. Speaking of making it happen, New Hampshire has to get something going right now. Second and seven after a three-yard gain on first down by Sturridi. Goldrich will keep it. He's gobbled up by Marcus Williams. That time it was the All-American cornerback and a gain of a yard for Goldrich. So third down coming up, and the Wildcats, Wildcats can ill afford a three and out here. Yeah, you're exactly right. There's going to be a lot of volume. We can already hear it stoking up. 
This is what makes this home field advantage probably second to none at the FCS level. Play clock running down. Play clock at five. Goldrich dropped the ball. It's kicked around. It's loose. North Dakota State with the scoop and the score. Levon Perry. Kelly, how much of that was the noise? I think it had a lot to do with the noise. The distraction, Sean Goldridge was all about trying to get the snap off. The pre-snap administration, we talked about it, so noisy, he forgot to do the smallest thing. Keep your eye on the snap. He just dropped it to the ground, and it cost his team dearly. Levon Perry with a fumble return for a score, and Goldrich trying to explain himself on the sideline. There's so much that goes on to try to communicate the play. None of those players you're looking at can hear a thing. The quarterback has to get right in the ear hole, and then he simply forgets about the most basic thing. That was not a bad snap. The quarterback just took his eye off the football. Levon Perry, part of that defensive line for North Dakota State, which is just loaded with experience and talent. Perry, a four-year starter. His fellow defensive tackle, Ryan Drevlo, an All-American and a four-year starter. Both ends, three-year starters. Three all-conference guys on that line. That's the strength of this Bison defense. Yeah, and Leon Perry needs to share that scoop and score with about 19,000 fans here because the quarterback and the offensive lineman couldn't hear a thing. And you do so much work before the snap as a quarterback, you have to get refocused on the play. But before the play, I have to catch the snap, and Goldrich did not do it. It's been an incredible three-year run for the Bison. Playing three playoff games at home in each of those seasons, that helps considerably, especially when it's close. But as we just saw, this crowd can be a game changer. Yeah, there's no question about it. And you can see head coach Sean McDonald right there is saying we have to regroup and collect ourselves, play with poise. And that was a last touchdown was a, was a result of not being poised on that play. Somebody's in the Christmas spirit. That's disturbing on some level. I can't quite quantify it. But... I'll chalk it up to holiday spirit. Give him okay. a free pass. I'll go with some Bear folks with have been tailgating since 2 p.m. So, Goldrich to Mello. He cannot hold on. That time he was blanketed by C.J. Smith. Second and ten. Smith is the guy teams will come after because Marcus Williams can take away your top receiver and half the field. You're exactly right. C.J. Smith has been tested a lot. Goldrich tried to test him on that play. Tremendous coverage. Bump and run coverage on Mello, and Smith wins that one. Bison slow to get set. Goldrich keeps it. Tackled by Little John. It's a gain of a yard. Third down. Goldrich against Maine in the second round. 291 yards passing the career high. A career high 99 yards rushing in the quarterfinals against Southeastern Louisiana. Tough to convert third and longs on this defense.
Aldridge over the middle. That's caught by Jimmy G and Santi, short of the first down. So fourth down coming up. They need about a yard. And the punting unit will come on with the Wildcats at their own 34. The crossing route, expecting pressure on the third and eight, but North Dakota State actually played a zone and then broke on the football. Sure tackling, funnel everything to third and long, and then get off the field. That's Bison defense right there. Christian Dudzik has returned two punts for a touchdown this season. He signals fair catch. He makes it at the 21-yard line, a 45-yard punt. Bison football, 4.38 to go in the half. New Hampshire has been one of the great turnarounds in the FCS this season. Started by losing three of its first four, nine and one since. Currently on a six-game win streak. Knocked off two seeded teams on the road. And they got over a big hurdle. This is a program that's been in the FCS playoffs 10 straight years, the longest active streak in the FCS, but had never been past the quarterfinals up until this year. Play action, first down is Bonnet. He's brought down by Manny Hassan, a gain of 12 yards. Bonnet, the backup fullback. That's another characteristic of this pro-style offense here in Fargo is that fullback, A, they use a fullback, which is becoming more and more rare, but he's a battering ram in the run game, but he's also a very good receiver in the pass game because those linebackers are stepping up expecting Ron, and he sneaks out to the flat like Bonnet did there. Play action again. Jensen with time, steps up, incomplete, and that's an easy flag as Brawl was interfered with. It's gonna be on Steven Timms. Well, we've seen the good of Timms' aggressiveness. You can see right there that the double move. He jumped the one route, and I told you, they're going to come back with a veteran quarterback. Pass interference on the defense, number 21. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. A veteran quarterback and a very good receiver in broad. They're going to take advantage of the aggressiveness of Tim's number 21 right there. Second time we've seen it. The post was really a double move. Outside move and then go to the post, and that was going to be a double move. Show the out and then go vertical, and Tim's actually made a nice play. He was beat, throw the guy to the ground, give up 15 instead of a touchdown. In college, remember, a spot foul is not in play on pass interference. It's only a 15-yard penalty. Oh, jury. Waited for a block and then turned back by a phalanx of white shirts. A gain of a yard. Well, this is the church crowd. Guess who's on the field? <laughs> North Dakota State's offense gets this treatment. Those guys act like they're totally disinterested. But the noise level goes way down so their offense can operate. But when the opposition is on the field offensively, you can't hear yourself think in this place. And that's already paid dividends here tonight. Corner blitz. It's a handoff to Ojuri. A first down and more, and Sam Ojuri all the way down to the 35-yard line, a gain of 15. And the Bison have racked up more than 170 yards rushing. The corner blitz is coming this direction. The quarterback is just going to run something away from the blitz. Very well orchestrated once again. Anticipate blitz one way, run the football the other way. Very good administration by a veteran quarterback in Brock Jensen. And since the third drive for the Bison, New Hampshire has not been able to slow this offense. They've been burned on play action. 
and the downhill running game has done wonders for North Dakota State. Now Sam now coming with the safety blitz. He's picked up. Jensen going downfield and Cross single covered. And that time, Tims did a pretty good job staying with his man. Yeah, Steven Tims, you're absolutely right. But once again, it was the double move. This time, it was the post and then the corner. And Steven Tims played it extremely well. The pressure off the edge once again, expecting the play action pass by New Hampshire and very good coverage by Tim Tims on the back end. Moody and Perkins check in here on second down and 10. As we see the three receiver look. That's Perkins in motion. Here's O'Jury. Finds a hole. And right now, North Dakota State just bludgeoning New Hampshire with the ground game. You know, Jury does bring that little giddy up to the run game. You can see the pullers once again getting bodies to the point of attack. You know, Jury does a very good job of decision making in the run game. Start outside, press the line of scrimmage, and then the vision takes you back for yards in the middle of the field. This North Dakota State offense can wear you down. We saw them it's do it. It's happening right now. We saw them do it to Kansas State, yes. the defending Big 12 champs of the season opener. That's a great point. Kansas State is a very physical team. Jensen throws over the middle. He's got his tight end for a touchdown. Kevin Baldwin. Answered by the Bison. There is a flag on this play, but boy, this one escalated quickly. All sides on the defense, number nine. That penalty is declined. The try is good. Well, Anish, the power run by Ojiri on one play, followed by a vicious play action pass. Jensen to Bodlin on the next play. Right here. Is the tight end Bodlin? You're going to get play action pass inviting these defenders up, and you're going to throw essentially right over the top of them. 42 right there. Anderson thinks run. Bodlin has a play action pass in mind over the top of him. Very well executed. Incredible efficiency. Run it well, play action pass to make the defense pay. Bodlin has been a touchdown machine, especially when North Dakota State gets inside the 20, inside the 15. 18 receptions now, eight of which have gone for TDs. You know what was interesting? You asked Brent Vegan, the offensive coordinator, that very thing yesterday. You know, all these touchdowns by Bodlin, he says, you know what? It's a product of what we do offensively. I mean, that's exactly what we just saw. A vicious run game followed by a play action pass game that is almost impossible to cover. Brock Jensen, three touchdown passes here in the first half. Got off to a bit of a slow start. Eight of 15. Here's Steridi. And Steridi upended inside the 15-yard line. Let's check in again with Chris Cotter. But he's coming up at the half. I've got Robert Smith and I've got Matt Millen here in studio. We're going to look forward to... The bowl games all starting up on Saturday. A bunch of them on ESPN Networks. Also, the Division Three Championship being played tonight in Salem, Virginia, over on the U. And finally, an early season nominee for Dunk of the Year in the NBA. It's all coming up at the half. All right, thank you. First two minutes to play here in the first half of the Fargo Dome, North Dakota State. Winners of 22 straight, up by 24, 31 unanswered for the Bison. New Hampshire looking for something. Goldwich will run, and he gets to about the 18-yard line, a gain of five yards. The reason that we see Goldrich running so often on pass, pass plays is we see a, a Bison down on that play. The Bison are willing to go two high safeties, forcing 
the quarterback to make really good decisions. There's nobody open to throw the football to, and Goldrich is doing all he can, running with it and not forcing it into coverage. The injured North Dakota State player is senior Cole Jurek, the left end. And you hope it's not the shoulder. He's had shoulder problems all season that he's played through. Yeah, he's been banged up with that shoulder, and he has a high motor coming off the one edge. And when you couple that with Kyle Emanuel on the other side, that's how those defensive ends get pressure a lot of times, only rushing four guys. One of the captains, too. Great leadership out of 93. The winner of this game moves on to Frisco, Texas for the FCS championship. That will be played two weeks from Saturday. And North Dakota State or New Hampshire, whoever wins this game will get the winner of Eastern Washington and Towson. That second semifinal game set for tomorrow afternoon. Five wide receiver, Lil Goldridge's pass incomplete. Dangerous throw. And this Bison defense is really bore down. And it's third and five. R.J. Harris right there, number 15, is one of the places that Goldrich wants to go. He's really Goldrich's go-to guy, and obviously the Bison know that. They're actually playing their nickel back on him and not allowing Harris to get to the middle of the field from that inside slot position. The Wildcats have not converted on third down. Harris goes outside on this play. Goldrich hit as he throws it incomplete, intended for Mello and a late flag. the first third down conversion for New Hampshire thanks to the penalty and Travis Beck number 52 the nickel linebacker in on that play was trying to wall off Mello prevent him from coming across the field and just got there a little bit too early Goldrich's pass incomplete intended for crossing Second down and 10. We saw Carlton Littlejohn, 38, matched up on Dalton crossing on that play. Crossing's a running back. He splits out in that slot position. The Bison are very comfortable with number 38, Littlejohn, on the running back in the slot. Goldrich. Harris, that shallow cross wasn't going anywhere. Colton Eagle ate him up for no gain. Eagle left the Coastal Carolina game with a shoulder injury back in the lineup today. And you just see the smothering effect. Eagle breaking on the ball and getting to Harris before he can get loose. Remember what New Hampshire is trying to do offensively. They spread it out four or five wide. They want to run it between the tackles. And if they have them outnumbered in the box, they go outside. But right now, there is no operating room. The Bison used their second timeout to stop the clock with 1.22 to go. Again, the winner moves on to the championship game in Frisco, Texas, Saturday, January 4th at 2 Eastern on ESPN2. How about the game tomorrow? Eastern Washington was the last team to beat North Dakota State in the postseason. That was in 2010 when the Eagles won it all. And Terrence West and Towson, if they end up getting New Hampshire, if the Wildcats stage a comeback, Towson has owned New Hampshire. And Terrence West, he's got 730-plus yards and nine career touchdowns against the Wildcats in three games. Yeah, they don't want to see him again, there's no doubt. Eastern Washington better play well on the line of scrimmage or Terrence West is going to set some kind of record again. That game a lot like this game in terms of, in terms of style. You're exactly right. The contrast in style will be very evident tomorrow. Third and ten. Goldrich wants Harris. It's off his fingertips. Smith breathing down his neck, and it's fourth down and ten. Number 
The Bison have outgained the Wildcats 312 to 64 here in this first half. And remember how North Dakota State started this game. Their first three possessions, 37 yards and two turnovers. It's been a landslide every since. Nearly a block, a good punt. Dudzik retreats. Dudzik across the 20s, taking two punts back this season. And down at the 30-yard line, a 16-yard return after a 59-yard punt. It's been the ground game for the Bison, 187 rush yards in this first half. At the duo, we start with John Crockett, who's much more of a downhill guy. Needs to get better at doing the little things in pass protection. But it was when Crockett came into the game, he gave them a little bit of life because of his physical play. And then O'Jerry has a little more giddy up to him. You can see right there, being patient behind the polar. And then when you see green grass, you go ahead and Hit the Very good combination of running backs. Lang in the game at running back to start this series as Raw takes it out of bounds at the 37 yard line, a gain of seven. Yeah, you've got the two running backs Crockett, 96 yards, O'Jury, 60 yards, and then Lang, their third running back, has a receiving touchdown. Now that's a nice duo right there, and you couple that with. Some really good receivers brought at the top of that and a tight end that can catch the ball and a really, really physical offensive line. New Hampshire nearly jumped off sides. Fra over the middle and a nice job by Casey DeAndre to break that one up. DeAndre number one in the FCS in pass breakups and passes defended. Really nice bake by Dream. DeAndre breaking on the ball, the skinny post. The ball got to him. What Bra could have done differently, reach out and snatch the football with your hands. He let it get into his shoulder pads, and when a defensive back is breaking on the football, you don't have that much time. DeAndre from Brockton, Massachusetts, the city of champions. Produced a couple of great boxers, Rocky Marciano and Marvin Hagler. On third down, Jensen's pass is incomplete so fourth and three coming up and new hampshire finally gets a stop on this north dakota state offense and that's about the third pass that we've seen zach broad drop this evening that was very well thrown first down yardage and broad just doesn't look it in that's two in a row they should follow let this one bounce. It takes a bison bounce, and it goes out of bounds inside the five-yard line. A 59-yard punt, and after that interception on the first drive for North Dakota State, everything has gone right for the bison. Yeah, 59 yards of net. You talk about flipping the field. That's what it looks like, and that's exactly how North Dakota State suffocates you. Offensively, they extend drives. Defensively, they don't let you drive the football, and special teams are usually very buttoned up. New Hampshire started the season one and three. Essentially, this is a Wildcat team that's been playing a playoff game every week since the middle of October. And they're gonna go to halftime down 24. By North Dakota State using a timeout here. 30 second timeout. Final timeout for the Bison. You look at the comparison. Points allowed. Early on, the defense was not playing well. Over the last 10 games, the defense improved, and so did New Hampshire. Yeah, offensive numbers are, are very similar. I do think quarterback Sean Goldridge gave the offense a, a little more energy, but the defense has improved. But you're right. After the fourth loss of the season, they've been playing an elimination game every week, but they haven't been playing a team like North Dakota State or in a place like the Fargo Dome. Yeah, a couple of close losses early, one on the road at Central Michigan, a seven-point loss at Lehigh, and then a blowout loss at Towson. But New Hampshire managed to turn it around. They'll have to turn it around in the second half. 
Right now, we go down on the field and Kara. Coach, a bit of an uncharacteristic slow start. What contributed to the Bison regrouping? Well, you know what? That's a lot of poise and composure by our players. You know, anytime a quarterback throws a pick six and he calmed down and then we fumbled the football, defense came out. We're real pleased uh, with our guys and uh, we're pleased to be ahead like we are. It's pretty electric in here tonight. How has the noise impacted this game? Well, I think the fumble uh, that we returned for a, a touchdown was a significant factor there. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Anish? All right, Kara, North Dakota State outgained New Hampshire 319 to 61 in the first half. They go to the studio now for halftime. Chris Cotter, Robert Smith, and Matt Miller. Welcome back to the NCAA FCS Championships presented by Northwestern Mutual. Anish Shroff, Kelly Stauffer, Kara Capuano with you on this Friday night in Fargo, North Dakota State. 31 unanswered points to close that first half and the Bison leading New Hampshire in the first of two semifinal games. The winner moves on to the championship Saturday, January 4th in Frisco, Texas. The other semifinal tomorrow, Eastern Washington facing off against Towson in Cheney, Washington. You look at this first half, New Hampshire scored a pick six touchdown on the first drive of the game and then it was all downhill from there. I'm sure the Wildcats did force a fumble on North Dakota State's next drive. Couldn't turn that into points, and the Bison rolling with that run game. And you know what we really saw is a shaky start offensively, obviously, by North Dakota State. But when you play defense like North Dakota State does, there's a lot of confidence that you're going to weather the storm. And Brock Jensen, the quarterback, adds to that as well. New Hampshire managed just 62 first-half yards, averaging less than two yards per play against the Bison defense that's ranked number two in the nation in total D. The Wildcats will get it to start the second half. Here's Nico Scaritti. Inside his own 10. Couple of cutbacks and then he's tackled at the 18-yard line after an 11-yard return. Well, this is how it started. It was a great start for New Hampshire. Steven Timms, an interception return for a touchdown. Taking that one back 38 yards. The Bison did not score on the first three drives, then got going. Brock Jensen to Zach Croft. The running backs, John Crockett and Sam O'Jury finding holes. 319 yards in that first half for North Dakota State. Yeah, when North Dakota State got rolling, you see why they're on a three-peat kind of crash course right now. Tremendous offense and smothering defense. Ritty with a pickup of two on first down. It's second down and eight. And now if you're New Hampshire, your entire season has been one big comeback. The Wildcats started one and three. Essentially had to play a playoff game from there on out just to get into the field of 24. They had a big win against Villanova with a two-point conversion to get the W. They've now got to come back from 24 down against the team that has won 22 straight. again no gain let's go down to Carol Capuano one of New Hampshire's unique traditions comes at halftime when head coach Sean McDonald stands there high fives the entire team as they run out onto the field his message in that moment the same as in the locker room get after it go get him keep playing his word to describe this team this year guys resilient this is their test right here Wildcats have won six in a row. What a test it is. This is a final exam in 505 calculus. Third down and 10. Or rather, fourth down now. As the pass is broken up, but there is a flag. Offsides on the Bison. All sides, defense, number 53, five-yard penalty, third down. And Anish, to, to Kara's point, you know, to get back in this, if New Hampshire's going to, you only have one play to play at a time, right? So you can only score on a touchdown on one drive. So you just have to get back to the basics, execute one good play at a time, and then string those plays together. So third and three now after the penalty. The Wildcats converted one third down. It was on a penalty, so that doesn't count in the official stat sheet. 
Harris can't hold on. Good coverage that time by the linebacker, Little John. And another three and out for New Hampshire. You said good coverage by Little John, a linebacker on the best receiver, R.J. Harris. That's the problem right now for New Hampshire. There aren't any matchups that favor them right now when their offense is on the field against this Bison defense. I'm wondering if Sean McDonald starts pulling out maybe a couple of trick plays. That's a heavy part of this team's playbook. We haven't seen anything yet. Good punts here. Punter went down and there's a flag. And this could be a big break for New Hampshire. And I think it's going to be a big break either way. It's either, and this is the personal foul. So it's going to be 15 yards anyway, but five yards would have done it in that case. Personal foul. Loving the kick. That's Trevor Gebhardt with the costly penalty. So a fresh set of downs for New Hampshire. I think that's a good call. A punter is exposed punting the football, and so Trevor Gebhardt has to understand that. You have to give the punter the ability to come down on his plant leg after he punts the football, and Trevor Gebhardt did not do it on that play. Good call by the official. So the ball at the 41. The Wildcats have not scored a point offensively today. Goldrich. With a nice gain there on first down, give him four. And that was a straight run all the way once again by Goldridge in that quarterback run game. There wasn't even a read involved in that. Wide receivers were immediately locked in, locking on the air. Jimmy Owens checks into the game as the running back. He's their best blocking running back, primarily a blocking running back. Goldrich hit as he throws it downfield in double coverage. Intercepted by Dudzik. Christian Dudzik, who had a couple of picks last week against Coastal Carolina, comes up with one here for the Bison. Dudzik is just basically playing center field. You see 15 Harris going to the post, covered inside and outside, double coverage, and that was kind of one of, you, one of those kind of get you plays. Sprint to the left, all the while you're thinking home run to Harris over the middle. The Bison had it very well defended. Good pressure up front by North Dakota State as well. Danny Lukey bringing the heat. And that's the second turnover for the Wildcats. The first resulted in a scoop and score by Levon Perry. Come on, Come on, and now the ball of silence. Crockett pushes the pile, breaks free. Crockett with one man to beat. And finally pushed out of bounds inside the 10-yard line at the 7. It's a 71-yard run. Nick Cefalo saved the touchdown. The style of play that North Dakota unleashes on you is just so physically demanding on the line of scrimmage. Get a hat on a hat, move a lineman or two to the point of attack, and then Crockett continues to keep his legs churning, and the offensive line works overtime as well. Sam O'Jury comes in for Crockett. O'Jury gets the call. Comes back to the one-yard line. Second down and goal. You go back to that last play. Billy Turner, who's like one of the pillars of Hercules on that offensive line, he took out two guys. He's one of the best offensive linemen in the FCS. He probably, well, he was the offensive lineman of the year in the FCS, but this guy was knocking over Kansas State players in the season opener. And just a mountain of a man. And it's one thing to be so good on the line of scrimmage, your first assignment, but it's a whole nother matter to pick off second and third guys at the second and third level consistently down the field. 320 pounds, the movement of that man is amazing. Jensen on the option, reaches for the end zone. And Brock Jensen is in. North Dakota State continues to pile on. Take 
take a look at that big play. Watch the work of this man here. That's Billy Turner, the left tackle. Gets a great double initially, but he is now 10 yards downfield, softening the pile, and that's exactly what Crockett cuts off of. Number 77, Billy Turner getting 10 yards downfield and still working. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Well, Turner is a guy, when you talk to coaches at this level, they say you just don't see linemen like him playing in the FCS. A consensus All-American, first team AP All-American, the offensive lineman of the year. He's getting a well-deserved invite to the Senior Bowl. And even the Colts general manager, Ryan Grigson, came to Fargo to watch him practice and play. We see Jensen on the replay right there. Did he his knee go down before that ball crosses the end zone line? Remember how it was called on the field. Indisputable video evidence is the standard. Is any part of his body down before the ball crosses? But back to your point about Billy Turner, you're exactly right. I think the cat is out of the back. You know, people are starting to believe that number 77, Billy Turner, is under-evaluated. His score isn't high enough, and we see the movement. He's 6'6", 250, or 315 pounds. Let's take another look to see if Jensen got in. Again, the ruling on the field was a touchdown, so you need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. Yeah, the knee's not down on the right. The ball is across on the left. Those looks are in sync, and so the knee's not down. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Good work by our camera crew there to sync up those looks. And it has been a bison avalanche since that early pick six. It was seven to seven at the end of the first quarter, right? And then you're right, the avalanche of Bison has been unbelievable. I should say Stampede. Stampede, that's right. That's a much better word. It all began with a turnover. Christian Dudzik with two picks last week against Coastal Carolina. Intercepts the football, then Brock Jensen on a short touchdown run. Three championship, Wisconsin Whitewater and Mount Union. And Mount Union's Kevin Burke picked by Brady Gravold, who takes it the distance 52 14, the final in Salem, Virginia, for Wisconsin Whitewater, their fifth national title in the past seven years. Any? All right, thank you, Chris. Craig Ball in North Dakota State looking for a third straight title, talking to Coach Ball yesterday. He said this is the most talented team he has had since coming to Fargo and becoming the head coach of the North Dakota State Bison. You know, what's interesting about that is Kara told us that he was looking forward to this season. The last two national championship seasons have been kind of a bonus. He expected this season out of this senior class, 24 seniors that already have won it twice. Flag at the end of the play. Larry Saunders from the Southern Conference, the head referee. During the return, holding on the return team, number nine. That's the 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, New Hampshire. Penalty on Lamar Edmonds. New Hampshire's last drive, which was a total of 26 yards, was the longest drive by the Wildcats today. And 20 of the yards gained on that drive were due to penalty yards. Defense wins championships, right? North Dakota State plays the best defense at this level, or not. Over it finds his tight end, Harold Spears, and a first down for Spears as he gets across the 30. A gain of 11 yards, brought down by Travis Beck. Spears is an important part of this offense, and we haven't heard hardly anything of him. They move him around, he's detached, 
kind of a multiple use guy. Very important to this offense, and just one more guy that the Bison have taken away defensively tonight. Here's Dalton Crossin. Nice run by Crossin on first down, a gain of seven. Second down and short. Crossin is their third running back, so they really like him as a freshman from Lake Ronkonkomo, New York. And He's kind of like having Alexis as the third car in the garage. Yeah, pretty nice. And I think more speed than the other two guys. And you can see that on that last play. He can hit the hole in a hurry. They also line up in the slot from time to time. They'll use him on the end of the line. Goldrich can't get away from the pressure. And he goes down. Levon Perry was there for the sack. And it's third down. When you play a 4-3 defense like North Dakota State does, it's a passing situation. If you can get pressure with four consistently and cover with seven, it's going to be very tough sledding for any offense, and we've seen that here this evening. New Hampshire averages 450 yards of total offense per game. 84 so far today. by Shepard. Ryan Shepard still on his feet and finally brought down at the 10-yard line after a 35-yard return. We talked about in passing situations, North Dakota State likes the zone pressure, this is off, or linebacker Travis Beck. He's actually going to drop into the middle, the defensive end right there. And you can see there was a little bit of confusion on the crosser, the errant throw by Goldrich, and the ball bounces up in the air. It wasn't a clean look. I actually circled the wrong guy. The defensive end was Travis Beck. He had his hand on the ground. He actually dropped in coverage. And it confused the quarterback and led to an errant throw. Here's a jury on first down. Marches into the end zone. 44 to 7. Jury. All conference running back, 162 yards last week. Finding the end zone here for North Dakota State. And it is now 45 unanswered for the two time defending champs. Media timeout. Little throwback. Here's McNorton. He's got a ton of room to the 20, then to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, North Dakota State wins the Division I Football Championship. Jensen has it to the 10. He cuts it back. He will take it in. The North Dakota State Bison win their second FCS championship. North Dakota State looking to become just the second team in FCS history to three-peat. Appalachian State won three titles in a row from 2005 to 2007. This Bison team, since the start of this championship run in 2011, is 41 and 2. These guys don't know what losing is. And you talked about that way early in this game about how do you get a group like that motivated? Well, it has to start from within. You have to desire to not only be great, but this group, led by that man, is one of the probably the best player on this team, Billy Turner, number 77. They just simply do not want to lose. The coaches told us that this team had three goals at the start of the season. Win the conference, done. Win the championship, and go undefeated with two and three. Those two are going to go hand in hand. Jared Allison he takes it out to the 33-yard line, and we go down to Carroll. Guys, I had a chance to talk to Craig Bowl before the game, and obviously a lot going through a head coach's mind before an FCS semifinals. But I asked him for a word or phrase to describe this group of Bison players, and he came up with possessed 
with perfection. And that really captures exactly what you just talked about with their team goals this year, Anish. Yeah, perfection is something they're striving for. That's where you see the hunger in a team that's won two straight titles. Setty and on first down for New Hampshire. He gets a couple. Second and eight. Tackled by Dreslow. Drevlo. What Kara talked about really speaks to the culture now that they have in place, which Craig Bull as the head coach has been front and center in building that culture. But this group really doesn't accept winning, therefore they don't or losing, and therefore they don't know a lot about it. And you can see the way they play. Goldrich throws near side. He's got RJ Harris. Scampers out of bounds at the 44-yard line. It's a gain of nine. And with that catch, Harris above a thousand yards for the season. There's Chris Kleiman, the defensive coordinator, who was promoted to head coach. He will succeed Craig Bowl, who is headed to Wyoming once this postseason run is over for the Bison. And that might not be until January 4th. Credit the 24 seniors, the coaching staff, and Craig Bowl. That's not something that's easy to handle, Kelly. I can imagine you find out in the middle of your postseason run, your head coach is leaving to take another job. He says, I'm going to stay on. But they've tried to keep the focus on this season and now. There's the pressure. Goldrich flung down to the ground back at the 35-yard line. Mike Hardy with the sack. North Dakota State is incredibly difficult to move the ball against when you get into long yardage situations. You get behind schedule against this group, they blitz you, they can get pressure with four or cover, and now when you're third and long, it's extremely difficult to make something happen. Pressure again, here's the screen. Steady it. Tackle to the 46-yard line, a gain of nine. And it'll bring up fourth down. You know, Nish, we talked about this before the game. When you come in in an environment like this, as the defense gets off the field once again for North Dakota State, this environment is difficult to play in front of. But this team is difficult in every phase of the game. The margin for error is so small. It puts a lot of pressure on you as the opposition to execute at such a high level, sometimes it's just simply impossible to do. Dudzik signals fair catch, he drops it. But he's able to recover. As we told you, Craig Bowl, North Dakota State's head coach, has accepted the head coaching job at Wyoming, the three-time conference coach of the year. He's won the Eddie Robinson Award two straight years. That goes to the top coach in the country in the FCS. He's heading to Laramie. And talking to his successor, Chris Kleiman, yesterday, Kara asked him a great question. What, what's your stamp on the program going to be? And Kleiman said, I haven't thought about it yet. Circle back <laughs> yeah. maybe in a couple of weeks. But you really don't have to change much with the foundation that Bowl has put in here. Nice run there on first down by Crockett. He picks up eight. And Crockett, who really didn't see a ton of carries the first two games, up over 175 yards. And Chris Kleiman obviously is the defensive coordinator, so things will stay the same on that side of the ball, which is really the cornerstone of what's happened here in Fargo. Play really good defense. That's a comparison with Alabama. Sure. Be, the, be the best team on the field on the defensive side, physical on the line of scrimmage. And then offensively, it has to match your mentality on the defensive side of the ball. Brock Jensen, number 16, has to play efficiently, but you get lathered up on the line of scrimmage offensively and physically get downhill. Crockett that time, turned back for a loss of two. It brings up third down. You know, Craig Ball told us his biggest coaching influence was a guy you're familiar with, Tom Osborne. You live in Nebraska, and Craig Ball coached for Tom Osborne, spent a lot of time in Lincoln with that Huskers program, and he said sort of that old-school mentality, rugged defense, strong running game, 
the way he runs his practices. He gets all of that from Tom Osborne. Yeah, that was really interesting to hear the influence that Tom Osborne has had on Craig Bowl. And you're exactly right. Rugged defense, downhill offense, and be the most disciplined team come game day. And that's all about what this program does week in and week out. And the interesting thing is, we've talked about this coaching change, which is really unusual. The head coach is leaving, going to Wyoming, but he stays on the coach's team all the way through the playoff run, wherever that may end up. He actually said the template for that was what he experienced in Nebraska as well. In 96, Tom Osborne resigned and instantly Frank Solich was named the head coach and the transition was flawless. We're seeing it now. It really couldn't be going any better for the Bison than what we're seeing playing out in this playoff stretch run. And a penalty marker. Ball start, offense, number 13, five yard penalty. First down. Eric Perkins, number 13. Remember the Anish, the wide receiver that's playing because Ryan Smith is out. And I, we won't see him the rest of the day, but Ryan Smith has been out of games and back in because of a pulled hamstring really all throughout the year. But they will need Ryan Smith to win a national championship if indeed, and it looks like they'll get to Frisco in a couple weeks. They need the, the second part of that pass game. Smith has been a very good number two receiver this year, and he's a guy who's in the top five all time in receptions for the Bison. First and long, that's Gephardt. A gain of four, second down and 11. Stephen Timms on the stop. You know, to go back to Tom Osborne's philosophy, the one thing Craig Bowl said is. You know, a lot of times you see coaches, they want to implement their style on either offense or defense. And he talked a lot about sort of a uniting philosophy. And what you see offensively from North Dakota State is really a defensive philosophy. You know, Craig Ball is telling That's us in this point. age of spread offenses, a lot of coaches will say time of possession is a meaningless stat. And he says, well, if you can possess the ball, and keep those fast-paced offenses off the field, get them out of rhythm, but then your offense, in a way, is your best defense. And then conversely, their defense, North Dakota State's defense, only gives up 26% on third down. Right. I mean, that's a ridiculous number, but what that translates into, those high-flying offenses are now getting Gatorade over on the sideline, and this offense for North Dakota State that possesses the football has it once again. We've seen North Dakota State dominate the FCS the last couple of years. We've seen how Stanford gives Oregon fits at the FBS level. We've seen Alabama's dominance. Is this still the blueprint? Is this still the way that works best if you have the right personnel? Well, the last thing you said, if you have the right personnel, as we see North Dakota State just running up in there again, the right personnel is this. You have to win on the line of scrimmage against this team. If you do not win on the line of scrimmage, the offense just continues to possess the football. Injured player, Injured player for New Hampshire. We step aside. 2.57 to go in the third. The NCAA FCS Championship is brought to you by Verizon. Never be without football. Call Star Star NFL to download NFL Mobile from Verizon. <laughs> that is the Aldevron Laboratory here at North Dakota State University. It specializes in plasmid DNA and protein production technologies, among other things. It's got a client base that spans the globe. You weren't you a biology major in college? I was, but I knew nothing about what you just said. <laughs> I'm not sure what I said either. That's Crockett ran into a wall, bounced off, still standing, and now the whistle. A gain of a couple. John Crockett, 11 yards shy of 200 for the game, came into the game 
four yards shy of a thousand for the season. He's got a career high 189 yards. The Bison for the third straight season have 2,000 yard rushers, Crockett and O'Jury. And I guarantee you, both of those guys know how to find number 20 or number 77, Billy Turner, on the line of scrimmage. A mountain of a man that moves extremely well for 320 pounds. I would run behind that guy. Play action. Jensen under pressure. Throws it away. <laughs> intended for Frog. Good pressure that time by Jay Colbert. He's an outstanding pass rusher. Six sacks on the season. Had three in the Lafayette game. That was a first round game where New Hampshire sacked the quarterback ten times. Yeah, and that's one of the first times we've seen Brock Jensen really under pressure. The third down, kind of passing down situation. They play action pass, and then Colbert's able to force the throw away by Brock Jensen. So follow the deep man for the Wildcats waiting at his own 10-yard line. Teams have only returned seven punts against North Dakota State all year. Another good punt by LeCompte as the Wildcats will start at their own 10-yard line. Wisconsin Whitewater won the Division III championship tonight. The Division II championship tomorrow, noon Eastern. Northwest Missouri State against Lenore Rhine. That's on ESPN2. And, of course, the FCS champion will be crowned January 4th in Frisco, Texas. The FBS champion January 6th in Pasadena. Northwest Missouri State, first appearance in the D2 title game. Same for uh, since 2008. And the first appearance for Lenore Ryan. Goldrich under pressure, and he goes down. Little John with the sack. Carlton Little John has had himself a pretty good game. And he's had himself a great year when he went from the strong linebacker position over to the middle because of the injury to Grant Olson. Grant Olson had really big shoes to fill. The, the leader and the presence that Grant Olson brings to the table, but Little John's speed, I think, makes a difference in the middle. Stiff arm Goldridge. He's run out of bounds by Brian Shepard a game three. Here's Carlton Littlejohn for you. He's been everywhere. Yeah, and the speed is the difference. He's faster than Grant Olson. Doesn't play well in the box, but he gets deep in coverage, and then he reacts up to quarterbacks like Goldridge that can run the football. But strength combined with speed makes Littlejohn a next-level guy as well. He's only a junior, but he definitely has the skill set to play at the next level. The Wildcats still haven't converted a third down. And they finally do. Chris Sedian, who is head coach John McDonald, called this team's version of Mike Allstott. We saw a little Mike Allstott there as he bullies his way for a first down. And Sedian really is a fullback at the running back position, this one running back set. And you saw the power on that play. He was able to get yards after contact. Goldridge will keep it. Driven out of bounds by Shepard after a gain of a yard. You go back to Sedian. When this team was one and three, Sedian, who's one of the leaders, rallied the troops, called a closed door players only meeting. And you talk to people around this New Hampshire team, and they said that was when things started to turn. Sedian, Manny Sam, a couple of the other seniors really took ownership of the season. And now the Wildcats find themselves in the semifinals, one of the last four teams left. That's Dalton Crossan, tackled by Little John at the 30-yard line, and that will be the final play of the third quarter. North Dakota State, 15 minutes away from a return trip to Frisco. Now you are not gonna let them stand in between us and history. It's not gonna happen. It's a You're watching the NCAA FCS Championships presented by Northwestern Mutual. 
It's the start of the fourth quarter here at the Fargo Dome, all North Dakota State. And you look at the top two teams in the FBS and the FCS, the one word that you can put as an umbrella over all of this, both have been dominant and really dominant at all-time levels. Yeah, that's exactly the way I would frame it. And I would even say that if you compare the FBS to the FCS, I think North Dakota State is more dominant at this level than Florida State is at wow. the FBS level. Wow. We Ball start. Offense, number 61. Five-yard penalty, still third down. And the reason for that, Anish, is I, I think Florida State gives you a little room defensively. I don't think North Dakota State at this level gives you any room defensively. I think they have electric offenses, obviously kind of a contrasting in style. Very good quarterbacks that make quality things happen. But North Dakota State defensively plays championship caliber defense week in and week out. I'm going to come back to that. Third and eight. Goldrich over the middle, broken up by C.J. Smith, and it's fourth down. This defense only giving up 118 yards tonight. New Hampshire one for 12 on third downs. Kelly, you and I did a Florida State game. During that game, you said, I'm not sure this Seminole team has a weakness. We know Eastern Washington and Towson are watching this game tonight. Does North Dakota State have a weakness I think every team has in a sense a weakness the, the thing that goes along with it is anyone good enough to take advantage of what Great I don't point. do well I don't think that works with Florida State I don't know that anyone can take advantage of that we have a flag on the field I think there was some extracurricular activity after that play it was really a body slam but I don't know that anyone is good enough to take advantage of something that North Dakota State doesn't do well. One of the things they don't do well is they don't get takeaways. They got some tonight. They have three of them. But typically, they were only plus two coming into this game. But the flip side of this, their offense just simply doesn't turn it over either. And they're... After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct on the kicking team, number 30. 15-yard penalty, first down. They don't get takeaways, but they have the best third down defense by a long shot in the I country. I totally agree. <laughs> We're really trying here. <laughs> I haven't found it yet. And Ishraf, Kelly Stauffer, Kara Capuano. This was the scene back in September when game day visited Fargo, North Dakota. In terms of total viewership, it was the fourth most viewed telecast of ESPN's college game day this season. Give me the others. What were the other matchups? I think number one was the South Carolina, or rather the Clemson, Georgia season yep. opener. Yep. Uh, Alabama, Texas A&M was in the top three, and I believe the Michigan, other one Notre Dame, was right? Michigan, Notre Dame. And if you think about what Craig Bowl has built here, he's, let's get this right, he's built this program to where it is now. When he came to Fargo, this was a Division II program. Yep. They spent five years reclassifying to what was then called 1AA, and now the FCS. Brock Jensen, who's just played his final home game, comes off the field, and the senior gets a well-deserved ovation. That's the winningest quarterback in the FCS ever. Ever. I mean, that's the one note that jumped out to me. When you read that, I mean, you kind of know it beforehand, but when you read it, it's amazing that that young man has won that many games. Crockett bouncing off tacklers. Carson Wentz is the backup quarterback now in for the Bison. Jensen today, 11 of 21, three passing touchdowns. He also ran for a score. He's accounted for 11 total touchdowns in three postseason games. Here's the sophomore from Bismarck, Carson Wentz. Billy Turner also leaving the field. And Turner got a nice ovation. They may never see another offensive lineman like him in Fargo. Yeah, it would seem for a long, long while. That, that young man is going to play, I think, quite a long time at the next level. And shot of the backfield. That's complete to the tight end, Bob. 
NFL caliber number 77, Billy Turner, and I think the cat's out of the back. The NFL is kind of reevaluating this young man. And what you see out of him is he grades out at 90% on the year, and that means his initial assignment, nine out of 10 times he gets it exactly right. 96% against some team in Kansas State. Another senior, Tyler Gimmestead, just came off the field. So Craig Bull giving his yeah. seniors That's a nice stuff. little farewell here. This is the last home game for 24 seniors and also for Craig Bull and a lot of this coaching staff. Lang works the middle for three. And as good as North Dakota State has been on that offensive line of scrimmage because of the two guys you just talked about, they have three sophomores there. So they, they're in position to kind of reload and continue this downhill running game going forward. One of the most impressive stats is in the fourth quarter, North Dakota State has given up only six points all season. And most of their games, the score has been kind of like it is today. It's been out of hand. The game's decided in the fourth quarter. That's the second string defense. Third string guys a lot of times still playing until the whistle, still holding the other team down. And that's about the culture and the tradition that has been put in place here under Craig Bowl. is you get the next guys in there and they're held to a pretty high level. You do not want to let the starters down. So the standard is pretty high when you get playing time. Let me go back to Craig Bowles' journey as the All-American Andrew Grothman waves to the crowd and the senior comes off the field. Beginning his second year here at North Dakota State in 2004, the Bison began a reclassification process going from Division II to 1AA, which we now call the FCS. In those five years, he had some pretty good teams at times. And this North Dakota State football team was ineligible for the playoffs. That was an NCAA rule. Once you reclassify five years, you can't take part in the postseason as Chase Morlock whips off a nice run. So that's an entire recruiting class that had to buy in. And as that program started to build, Craig Ball pointed to a big win against Minnesota where he said that sort of galvanized the fan base. And this Fargo Dome started to fill up. And Craig Ball told us when he got here, People in the community told him, this building, this dome is too big. Now as he's on his way out, they tell him it's too small. Morlock with a short game. Kara's got more on this, Kara. Well, Craig Bull told us that the secret of the Bison's success is tunnel vision. These players don't get too high, they don't get too low. A big part of that, that senior maturity that you're talking about. But obviously there were high expectations on this program this year, back-to-back -back defending champions. They don't worry about other people's expectations. They worry about their own. They set themselves to a high bar, and they've obviously lived up to it. Again, no question. We see that crowd once again right there. And that's something that you talked about, and it's just changed dramatically. I mean, this is a place that now people want to come and watch a game. And Craig Bowles talked about that the Fargo Dome was really built for this in mind. They wanted to be playing home games in a loud place in December, and that's exactly what they're doing. This Fargo Dome is kind of living up to its reputation. That is about the only thing the crowd has done wrong today, the wave. Yeah, they're, the wave looks pitiful, and their offense is on the field. So that's the most noise they've made when they've possessed the football. That's the only thing we can fault this crowd on so far today. They forced one turnover. Actually, it's getting better. You have a little more rhythm the second time around in that wave. So we may have to let them off the hook. Caught by Vrah. It'll bring up a fourth down. You know what threw them off is starting the wave when their offense has the football because remember the tradition, they essentially sit on their hands and keep their mouth shut when their own offense is on the field. And all of a sudden, someone stood up and said, let's start the wave. Offense stays on the field here on fourth and six. The buys an 11 of 16 on fourth downs this season.
We got a pistol look. We have not seen that from North Dakota State today. Nice will keep it. He's tackled shy of the first down marker. So New Hampshire will get it on downs. Wildcat ball with 8.29 to go. Craig Ball and his team, they're headed back to Frisco. Apparently, they gave him the first down there. It looked like <laughs> Wentz was, uh, his knee was down before he got to that first down marker from our first down like line. It. That's a generous spot, and the Bison will keep it, and they'll continue to milk the clock. So, false alarm. Here's Morlock using the stiff arm. Knocks over a defender. And finally brought down by Manny Assam, the senior from Bloomfield, New Jersey. Let's go back to the fourth and sixth play. This looked like Wentz was down before the first down marker. I mean... <laughs> That's That's a a yard. Yard. That marker. looks like a yard the unless the first down marker's is, wrong. Yeah. It's it's usually fairly accurate. It's within a, e inches. It's not perfect, but whoa, that was uh <laughs> that was a stretch to say the least. They didn't even usually you could at least measure it. Sure. They didn't even hesitate. Back to Morlock. She carries here in garbage time. Chase Morlock, a freshman from Across the way in Moorhead, Minnesota, a state champion wrestler in high school, also an Eagle Scout. It's a great combination. But the recruiting ground right now that Craig Bull has in place that Chris Kleiman is going to have to take the torch now is obviously North Dakota. And South Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. They trickle down into Nebraska a little bit, but that's where you get your blue collar guys that can keep this tradition and culture going on here in Fargo. On second and 10, Morlock again. Stood up by Akeel Anderson after a gain of three, third down and seven. For New Hampshire, it's been a heck of a run from one and three to one of the last four teams standing. You feel for the Wildcats a little bit. They ran into a juggernaut and a team that two weeks from tomorrow might be hoisting its third straight championship trophy, but that man right there has done a terrific job not losing his team and not losing this season after some early adversity. Yeah, head coach Sean McDonald, you're exact, exactly right, and he's been there a long time, and the continuity, really, he's had really good coaches come and go, Chip Kelly chief among them, but he's kept that thing going, switched offensive philosophies, and now they played better defense down the stretch this year. That really made a difference and got them to a place they've never been before. Two tight ends set. Wentz, play fakes, throws. That's hauled in. Make it incomplete, second and goal. Luke Albers was the intended receiver. It is a catch, I'm sorry. You certainly see a little bit about what Carson Wentz brings to the table as he's going to have to take over for Brock Jensen. Good job boot, booting outside, throwing off a strong foot, accurate pass. And receiver certainly didn't have the football at the end of that play. I'm just not exactly sure what's going on here. Am I 0 for 2 here? Or, I mean, do, do I, I have a little leeway? I'm going with you, partner. <laughs> Morlock. He's going into the end zone. You know, the game's out of hand with a fourth down call. Yeah. Someone wants to go the home. Quote unquote catch by Albers. Morlock with a rushing touchdown. North Dakota State 344 yards on the ground. And that last drive, that is vintage Bison football. 15 plays, 61 yards, and the drive spanned over nine minutes. Two weeks from Saturday, it's the FCS Championship in Frisco, Texas. You can watch that game on ESPN2 January 4th at 2 p.m. Eastern. For more info, go to NCAA.com, the official online home 
for all 89 NCAA championships. It's all about bookkeeping here, 52 to seven, North Dakota State on top of New Hampshire. The 52 points, a postseason record for the Bison. You think North Dakota State has a preference of who they'd like to see in Frisco in a couple of weeks? I will get to that. You know, Eastern Washington, certainly there's the revenge factor. A lot of these seniors were freshmen. When Eastern Washington knocked out North Dakota State in the 2010 playoffs, and that was the last postseason game the Bison team lost. Towson is very similar to North Dakota State with a great running back in Terrence West. We'll talk about those possible championship game matchups in depth when we come back. The NCAA FCS Championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA and in part by Audi Truth in Engineering. That's the Roger Maris Museum here in Fargo. Maris set the single season home run record with 61 homers in 1961 since bested. Grant Olson getting a well-deserved send off. You talk to players and coaches on this team. He is the heart and soul of North Dakota State football. Yeah, his leadership, his experience, and even really his presence on the practice field since he went down with that ACL. And that was really all seniors on that defensive lineup right there and call timeout before the play is snapped so you can give them a very well-deserved send-off. They've taken this program to places they've never been before. Let's take a look at tonight's Reese's perfect play. And we go from the defensive side to the offensive line. Billy Turner, he was perfect and then some. And North Dakota State either runs behind 77 or they run away and the running back understands that they have a cutback behind 77. And he just absolutely chews up defenders. That play finished about 10 yards down the field. And here he goes again. What a monster on the line of scrimmage. You saw that last play. He pushed Colbert about five yards back, and Colbert is the best defensive end on this New Hampshire team. Jimmy Owens picked up five on the previous play for the Wildcats. As Goldridge dives for the first down marker. And it looks like he's going to be just short. It's, it's pretty comforting, to say the least, for an offense where you can run behind 77 is kind of a given play. First down for the last run was good enough for a first down, so they give it to Goldrich. They've been generous here with spots. <laughs> You're not wrong again, are you? I'm going with you on all three of those. There's Dalton crossing to the 45-yard line, a gain of six. We remind you, Sports Center follows her game here on ESPN2. North Dakota State on its way to the championship game. They will face either Eastern Washington, the Eagles with Vernon Adams, who finished second in the voting for the Peyton Award behind Jimmy Garoppolo. That goes to the best offensive player in the FCS. And Towson has a bruising running back who we saw put on an absolute show last week in Charleston. 350 plus yards, five rushing touchdowns. Terrence West is a beast to bring down. How do you size up North Dakota State against Eastern Washington and Towson? Well, I think Eastern Washington actually brings one thing that Towson doesn't, and that's the culture and tradition, somewhat like we see out of North Dakota State, not on the same level, but they've been there, done that. Towson's kind of living on borrowed time and having a great run as the playoff started. I would like to see Terrence West against this North Dakota State defense. Something would have to give there. That's Mello, and he picks up a first down as he gets out of bounds. Take a look at the bracket. You can sharpie North Dakota State through, move them along to the championship game. And it will be Eastern Washington and Towson. That game tomorrow at 2 Eastern on ESPNU. The second semifinal. Towson. 
knocked off the number two seed Eastern Illinois last week. Eastern Washington held serve at home over on the red surf and cheating. Danny Lukey with the sack. Talk about Terrence West against this defensive line. That would be a great matchup. Yeah, there are going to be a lot of small automobile accidents during that type of matchup. The running back, Terrence West, is a downhill guy. He actually had more giddy up to the edge than we actually expected, but that would be a nice matchup. But Eastern Washington is a really complete football team. That would also be a very nice matchup. We really can't go wrong in Frisco in a couple of weeks, January 4th to be exact. Goldridge throws on the run. Nice catch there by R.J. Harris and a late flag. And Ellis will receive downfield on the offense, number 69. Five-yard penalty, still second down. After the game, Sports Center, Jay Harris, Shadnan Virch standing by. LeBron James with a dunk that you have to see. A couple of great big men, Dwight Howard, Roy Hibbert, Rockets, and Pacers. And the Packers have ruled out Aaron Rodgers for this weekend, what it means for Green Bay. Plus, they'll go through all the NFL playoff scenarios. 2.30 to go. Brock Jensen on his way to another win. He has won more games than any quarterback in FCS history. Goldrich over the middle, and Harris could not hold on. That was thrown a little behind the receiver. Not a lot of operating room down the field, and we've seen that all night. North Dakota State has gotten pretty consistent pressure. But saw, saw Sean Goldrich rushing four that's a luxury to have when you can cover with seven sometimes even eight and still get pressure on the quarterback makes it tough sledding on any offense third and long goldrich quarterback draw gets a block for Mello, and goldrich run out of bounds at the 20 yard line it's a gain of nine so fourth down coming up a bit more manageable now and this really has been the closest thing that New Hampshire has had to a scoring drive all day. Remember, their one touchdown was a pick six on the very first drive of the game. Yeah, North Dakota State is deep into their roster right now, obviously, because of the score of this game. But that's really was the template, is that Chip Kelly offense that he started years ago here. And to be able to run it between the tackles and have an effective passing game, and they haven't done either consistently well. Here comes the pressure. Goldrich throws. He's got his tight end Spears, and it's a catch. It'll be first and goal, New Hampshire. There is something at stake here. Remember, North Dakota State has only given up six fourth quarter points all season. That was a very nice job at the end of that. That was a nice throw, but Spears and the ball skill at the end. Tight coverage and to go up and get that, and that ball actually looked like it might have penetrated the the pylon right there. Again, the Bison have yielded just six points in the fourth quarter all season. That's Setian. The ball comes out, but they say he was down and shy of the goal line. No game. Second goal. Final home game for Brock Jensen. What a career he's had. MVP of the championship game last year. He's had a number of postseason heroics along the way. The Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year this past season. Craig Bowles, final home game as North Dakota State's head coach. Quarterback drawn, second and goal. Goldrich stood up again. You think these players don't know about their fourth quarter defensive stat? And remember, this is third and four teamers, and they know what's on the line, and this is what makes for a successful program. More than just a successful team, 
once every so often, but a program that has staying power because you get third and four teamers in there that have pride to keep the offense out of the end zone as well. Crowd still into it. Third and goal. And New Hampshire finally finds the end zone with 29 seconds to go. It's the senior from East Longmeadow, Massachusetts, Chris Sedian. A 12-play, 61-yard drive, and Sedian with his eighth rushing touchdown of the season. A former walk-on, a co-captain. One of the leaders on this team. <laughs> 29 seconds to go in regulation. We remind you, Sports Center following the game on ESPN2. Capital One Bowl Week kicks off tomorrow with a full slate of games. Two Eastern on ESPN. Wazoo, Colorado State in the Gilded New Mexico Bowl. Fresno State, USC in the Royal Purple Las Vegas Bowl. You've got the famous Idaho Potato Bowl and the Arnold Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Craig Bowl, he got the sneak attack Gatorade bath. The Powerade bath. Apologies. That was good execution. Crockett, the running back, was given a hug and kind of the decoy, and then the wire goes over the top, created a really good angle. That's good stuff. North Dakota State on its way to Frisco to play two weeks from tomorrow in the FCS Championship, and the Bison will face either Eastern Washington or Towson. That means Craig Bowl is going to have to wait at least a day and two weeks before he becomes the next head coach for the Wyoming Cowboys, and I don't think Craig Bull minds one bit. He wants to see it through with this group. Yeah, they're well on their way, and I don't know that he cares who they get either. And you're exactly right. The way they're finishing with the coaching change and through all of that clutter, it's been really amazing to watch play out. Derek McGinnis is the new quarterback. He'll either hand it off or take a knee. Give it to Chase Morlock, who takes it to the 10-yard line. And that should do it. For 24 seniors, their final home game. For Craig Bull, his final home game. And what a performance by this Bison football team. They are going back to Frisco and will defend their championship as they attempt to go for a three-peat. North Dakota State will face either Eastern Washington or Towson and will try to become just the second team in FCS history to win three consecutive championships. Our final score from the Fargo Dome, North Dakota State 52, New Hampshire 14. Time for Sports Center now. Jay Harrison, Adnan Burke.